Hey gang, Will here from the Ashland Fly Shop with your 2017 trout preview and what a year it is uh, shaping up to be. Um, so just, just a bit of an overview. This is gonna, this is gonna be a long one, so settle in. Uh, grab a cup of coffee. We're gonna talk about a lot of different areas uh, in our region, Northern California, Southern Oregon, and what to expect and, and what you're gonna find out there and, and what you might not. So um, the first thing I wanna jump right into is, is what a year we've had. Uh, in case you've been under a rock, we've had an unbelievable amount of precipitation this year. We have a very, very dense and large snowpack still to go through here at the you know, about the 10th of May. So, um, so we can expect to see flows, you know, fluctuating a bit um, as, we, as we go through the beginning of the season here. That said, um, I think these conditions are about as, as great as we can expect for this summer's trout fishing season. So uh, personally, I'm extremely excited about it. I know it's gonna be a little tricky finding uh, places to fish for the next few weeks, but once we get into that mid to late June mark, man, it's, we're gonna be home free. We're gonna have some really good fishing um, in, in these areas. So one of my favorite early places to fish is Hack Creek, and that's uh, in the Lassen County of really, really beautiful Spring Creek. And that's probably one of the best bets for right now uh, because it is a Spring Creek and it's not as affected by flows. Um, it's one of the first places that um, I like to visit in the year, and I've already been there, and it was just gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Um, just in prime, prime shape, uh, beautiful weed growth um, in, the, in the river. Um, flows were definitely up a bit. Um, and a, lo a lot of similar stuff that I find there every year as far as hatches, you know, starting to see some early PMD, some caddis happening, some salmon flies uh, just starting to come out. Uh, typically it's kind of a nymph show in the beginning. I found the fishing particularly tough this year. It was pretty challenging. Um, I did see uh, some good dry fly activity, which was really great. I was totally blown away and very impressed by the amount of work that cow trout has done um, on the wild trout stretch uh, from the powerhouse to ripple downstream. Just really phenomenal work and I actually think the fish are gonna be holding down there a lot more than we've seen uh, in the past. So, um, you know, if you haven't, take a walk downstream, take a look at the amazing work that they've done down there and plan on doing a little fishing down there if you can. I saw some beautiful rising fish or some great vantage points to see where fish were feeding and uh, it's really worth taking a look there. But Hat Creek's very good place for a season opener. Um, the lower section of the river can be very good, a really nice place to go and, and check out and spend some time. Uh, Fall River, uh, another great bet for early season fishing. If you haven't uh, been over there, it's a, a larger, one of the larger spring creeks in uh, California, in, North, in Northern California, and it's just, just a beautiful place. Um, again, like Hat Creek, the reports I've gotten are real mixed. I've heard of some quite large fish coming out of there, but, uh, but not really a lot of action. So uh, very similar, if you're, if you're at Fall River, um, you wanna be fishing a typical way, you know, intermediate sinking lines and stripping little nymphs, little buggers, leeches, things like that. It's probably where you're gonna find fish. Um, it's really known for its PMD hatches and those will get ramped up here in the next uh, several weeks. It'll start happening with the warmer weather. But uh, I would assume that it's in, in good shape with good water quality. I would assume that it has similar kind of uh, weed beds and growth that we're seeing in there, nice, nice healthy habitat for bugs. And hopefully we're gonna start seeing, uh, seeing those bugs ramp up. But uh, always a good early season uh, bet if you, if you get over there and do some fishing, you know, grab a guide or use the cow trout access there, um, you know, by the bridge. That's a really nice place to access it and fish upstream the bridge. That's a good, good bet at Fall River. Cloud River, one of our absolute favorite places to fish. Um, really, really high flows. Clear, but really high. People are fishing. The road to Adi Na, I think, is open at this point. I think it's a single lane uh, down to the lower area, the campground, the conservancy down there, Adi Na. Um, so expect fairly rough road, maybe fairly rough camping conditions with a lot of fallen debris and trees and stuff, but I do believe it's open. Last I checked, it was around 900, so that's pretty high. 
We look at the McLeod to be around 150, you know, 250, 150, so 900 is obviously high. You're just not going to be able to fish all the water that you want to fish. You're just going to have to use the trails and, and look for, uh, look for uh, more open water, bigger pools, fish the edges, you know, all the, all the same high water tactics that we use. Mostly nymphing, I'm sure you're going to be nymphing, nymphing mostly in there. You know, if you do find a place where you can, uh, you know, get to rising fish, then, you know, maybe some tail outs and stuff and look for some mayfly activity and some caddis. Um, salmon flies are going to still be a little ways off, but uh, and keep an eye on the McLeod. Boy, it's hard to say what they're going to do with the flows there. Um, I do expect them obviously to come down, but I, I know that northern flank of Shasta, I mean, there's a lot of snow to go through. So we can see them really bump flows up if we get heavy precipitation or heavy snow melt. Um, you know, we just want to keep an eye on that one. Um, as far as dramatic changes in flows. Uh, but the roads are open, the road to Ash Camp, uh, single lane uh, down there as well, but you can get down there and camp at this point too. Uh, just keep in mind the high flows. Upper Sacramento, another absolute favorite place uh, to fish. Just a wonderful spot. Again, experiencing high flows, high and clear. Uh, really similar with the McLeod. You're really going to be moving around down there. A lot of walking, uh, looking for your look, looking for those spots to fish, looking for those runs that you can access easily. Again, probably going to be a pretty nymphy show down there. You might see a few caddis. You might see a few sporadic rises. Um, not really known as a real dry fly river uh, anyway. We can find some good, you know, some good rising fish in certain areas, but it's going to be tough to find them at these flows, I think really tough. So really nymphing, really looking for those troughs, looking for those uh, sections. And you'll probably find fish there because they're going to be hungry. Uh, they're definitely going to be looking, they're definitely going to be looking for food. Keep an eye on the upper sack too. There's several tributaries that can come in. And I do think the upper sack on a warm day could pop up, uh, you know, maybe fairly significantly in the afternoon when it's at its uh, warmest. That northern flank of Shasta has just got a ton of snow to go through. So be careful when you're wading that, that these freestone streams, you know, they can really pop up in the afternoon with warmer weather. So if you may cross something in the morning, it may be tougher to get back across in the afternoon. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, but we're really keeping an eye on the upper sack. Honestly, getting through the snowpack, I think we're looking at you know, maybe even much later in the month, even into the second week of June before we really see it come down into shape. So we're keeping an eye on that. It's a favorite place for us to fish and um, we'll be reporting back on that for sure. So we'll talk about the wood, the Williamson and the Klamath, uh, Klamath Lake itself. Uh, I've definitely had some pretty decent reports from Klamath Lake and I do think with the warmer weather that the fish are probably going to be a bit more active at this point. Um, so that's a, a pretty good bet right now, I think, as are some of the other lakes in our region. The Williamson's not open till the 22nd, so that's still a little ways off. That can fish okay early, but it really kind of ramps up in the middle of summer. But, you know, early season fishing, if you don't expect much, you can probably find a few fish, that, some pretty nice fish in there if you're floating the Williamson. It's not going to be quite as busy um, as you're going to find a little bit later in the summer. The wood is a tricky place to fish with access and things like that. It's a, maybe a good bet on the early end, pulling streamers for some of those bigger browns. You know, actually accessing the wood from Klamath Lake, fishing the, uh, you know, the, the inlet there uh, can be a pretty good bet um, in the early season, kind of fishing the lake. Uh, the river's a little tricky unless you're drifting. There's a limited access for walking. There can be some early mayfly hatches, but it's really tricky to find. So um, if you've got your early season game figured out on the wood, then, then good on you. That's great. Uh, but it's a pretty tough one to go, to go into blindly. But, uh, but there, are some nice, um, there are some nice fish in there. Um, Upper Klamath River uh, is a place that we really like to fish below Iron Gate Dam uh, for salmon flies when the conditions are right. So we're still at about 3,000, which isn't too bad for drifting. That is a hatch that can kind of come and go quickly, salmon flies and golden stones, but it can be a lot of fun down there. 
So we don't really know exactly what to expect with that this year. Uh, really keeping an eye on it and definitely we'll try to get down there um, and do some fishing. Usually I like to do a float or two down there a year. Another quick piece on the upper Klamath stretch, that's really a boat show. Like you really want to run that in a drift boat or a raft or pontoon or something like that. In that stretch from Iron Gate to Klamath on Bridge, there's just not a lot of walk-in. That's where you're definitely going to find the bulk of the salmon fly, stone fly activity. Um, very, you know, really almost impossible to access that without a without a drift boat. So, you know, using a guide or using a craft that you have is a, a really good bet through there. We look for that to happen around mid to late May. So that'll be coming up pretty quickly, maybe into June. But uh, that mid to late uh, May window is pretty good for stonefly, salmon flies. Expect a lot of water for sure. I definitely expect a lot of water down there. Uh, but, um, but we are seeing flows that are just, just on the edge of being okay. Um, so we're keeping an eye on that and, and, and we'll report back on, on that upper Klamath stretch. So there's a preview for you for the 2017 uh, trout year or early season for Northern California and Southern Oregon. And we're just getting kind of the first reports now. So we'll certainly be back uh, with more, more updated reports um, as, as they come in and as we are able to get out and fish a little bit and discover. Again, I think we're really going to be pushing through this first few weeks with some higher water. But once we get past that, you know, into the more favor favorable flows like mid-June or so. I think it's just going to be smooth sailing and, and hopefully a really, really great season. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if you need any more up-to-date uh, information, please give us a call at 541-488-6454 at the shop or visit us online. We'll be posting field notes and things like that in our blog section. Um, so we really appreciate you checking in. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thank you.